Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. It may be cold and snowy right now, but in six weeks, this farm will be teeming with life. We've got broiler chicks coming in the first week of April. We have replacement layer chicks coming. We've got 20 pigs to send to the butcher. We've got the feed wagons to fill for the season. All of this activity means we're running into big cash outlays. In fact, the biggest of our season. And it happens just at the time when our bank account is at its lowest. Because in the summertime, we have lots of markets to go to. We're moving lots of products. But in the wintertime, sales really slow down and we wind up living off of our savings. What I want to talk about in this video is a way to mediate that up and down in cash flow through the use of a meat and egg CSA. And this gets us our money right when we need it, at the beginning of the season when we're spending all that cash. So stay tuned and I'll walk you through how we do it. CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture. And the origins of this idea lie with produce farms. In fact, there's a lot of produce farms around where we live that do big CSAs that are almost all of their farm sales. And what it is, is a customer prepays for a share of the farm's production. The CSA business model hasn't been as widely adopted by livestock farms like ours. And I'm not sure why that is. Um, I can think of several hurdles to get over. One is the variability in the pricing of our products. A pack of soup bones could go for a buck fifty a pound and a filet mignon could go for twenty bucks a pound. And we're not going out in the field and picking things on a weekly basis. So at first it's not an intuitive model to follow and it required some adapting for us to make it work right. But if you can adapt it, like I said, it gets you your money right when you need it at the beginning of the growing season. A CSA is a win-win for both you and your customers. You're getting your money up front when you need it the most and they're getting a price break on your products because they're paying ahead of time. They're also getting an insured supply of your products. In other words, you're setting aside a portion of your farm's production to make sure that they get what they ordered on the schedule that they ordered it. Whereas for customers that aren't a part of your CSA, you may just run out of that product and they'll have to wait until you grow more. Unlike the traditional produce model of a CSA, we limit our CSA membership to what we need to get our farm up and running because we can sell the rest of our products at retail price. So we really don't want our CSA to get any bigger than the cash we need to get going. All right, well, how does all this work? It's super simple by design. We have either a six or 12 month CSA. The six month and the 12 month both start on June 1st of every year. The six month runs June 1st to December 1st. The 12 month obviously runs through the next June 1st. We have three main plans and those plans are based on family size. So it's the quantity of the share. And in each share you get chicken, eggs, a holiday turkey and pork a la carte if you want that added to your share and you get it once a month. Chicken eggs and turkey are easy to offer as part of a CSA because they're known quantities. We know that the average size of the chicken that we grow here is four and a quarter pounds dressed. Eggs are per dozen and a turkey is by the weight. So you could get a 12 pound turkey, a 15 pound turkey, an 18 pound turkey with your CSA. It's easy to figure out pricing for those. Pork is pretty easy too because the cost per cut of pork doesn't vary that widely. A couple bucks between ground pork and bacon, which is our most expensive thing. So we leave the customers the option of selecting each month which pork cuts they want as part of their share. We just specify what the weight is, either three pounds, five pounds, or eight pounds of pork per month. Even though we grow beef on our farm, we don't offer it as part of our CSA because we haven't been able to figure out how to price it. The cuts of beef vary so widely from a $3 per pound soup bone all the way up to a $20 per pound filet mignon and I have no way of coming up with an average price for a CSA. Now I have seen tier systems for beef where 
they divide the beef cuts into three tiers and the bottom tier may be soup bones and ground beef and things like that. The middle tier may be roasts and lower grade steaks and the top tier is prime steaks like T-bones or ribeyes or things like that and they allow the customer to get a certain amount from each tier per month but my gosh all that is so complicated and I wanted to keep it simple so we just leave beef out of the equation for our CSAs. One of the nice things about structuring a CSA this way is that it's easy to customize. If a customer wants one chicken a month and eight dozen eggs a month instead of the usual one chicken and two dozen eggs, it's easy to come up with a price for them. So we can tailor it to what the customer wants and that way there's no waste in the CSA. They get just what they want and just what they're going to eat. A key part to having a CSA is advertising it. You gotta let people know that this is something you're offering. And around here all the produce farms start advertising about this time of year in February for a May and June start date for their CSA. So that's when we start advertising too. And we have a mailing list so we send out a MailChimp email to our customer list to let them know that our CSA is open for sign up. We advertise on social media. We print brochures and we have those at our market booth and that way we get the word out to all of our customers. Another good way to advertise your CSA is through any large businesses or other institutions you have in the area. We happen to have Cornell University about 15-20 minutes away from us and that is a huge potential customer base. So one of the great things that we did is we got on their health and wellness newsletter and let all the folks at Cornell know that we're offering a CSA and we offer delivery to Cornell. So that's a huge potential customer base. In your case, you may have a business like IBM or some manufacturing business or some other institution, maybe it's a college as well, where you have a sort of built-in base of customers. So our CSA is pretty precise in what we offer and this differs from some of the other common ways of buying bulk meat. Of course there's the traditional buying a half, a whole, or a quarter animal and there's also a thing called a box share CSA where you get a selection of cuts from each animal. And the reason we don't do that is because I think there's more waste in that and it's less appealing to the customer. A lot of people don't want uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that from the animal. They're focused on specific cups, cuts. So if they're after pork, they may be after just pork chops or just sausage. And there may be a whole lot of cuts that they don't like from pork. And there's no reason to put that in a box share for them. The same thing happens with halves and holes. Um, people get a selection of things that they're not really crazy about. So we save those cuts for the customers who really want them and then allow our CSA members to choose the pork cuts that they want every month. In contrast to traditional box share or half or quarter animal, the price of our CSA is super simple and risk free on our part to come up with. All we do is take the retail price of what's included in the CSA, so say it's a chicken. Chicken retails for us at $4.25 a pound an average chicken's four and a quarter pounds. Do the multiplication, that's $18.06 per chicken. We run through and do the same thing with the cost of a dozen eggs, the cost of a turkey at the size that they want it, and we use an average cost for the per pound price of a la carte pork, and add them all up. So you come up with a figure of X for the whole CSA over six or 12 months. Then we take a percentage off and typically that's 10 or 15 percent we round down to the nearest even number and there's your CSA price. It's completely risk-free in terms of how you're coming up with the numbers. It's not a shot in the dark based on overall farm production. It's just based on the specific products that they want. An important thing to note is that we don't take credit cards for CSA payment. Normally we take credit cards for every other purchase, all of our market sales and things because it's just the way that people like to do business these days. But we're already cutting the price of the product for the CSA share and we pay about another three to three and a quarter percent on top of that for using a credit card. So we accept cash or check and not credit cards for CSAs. 
So that's it. It's a really simple way to get you your money when you need it and give the customers a break on your prices. If you'd like to see how our CSA looks in exact detail, you can go to our website where there's a tab on the top that's got the CSA form in it. The link to our website is down below in the video description. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments down below and I'd be happy to answer them. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time.